Good evening, children of the millennium. I, I'm here tonight to take you back to time before smartphones, before text messaging, and most definitely a time before WhatsApp Messenger. Yeah, we're going back to the 90s, and tonight we're going to be talking about pagers. Um, so in this video, I'll be talking about what a pager is, how it works, how the technology differs uh, from uh, text messaging technology. Um, we'll tear one of them down, have a look inside, and hopefully at the end of the video we'll do something really cool so stay tuned and keep your fingers crossed that the cool thing actually works so what is a pager well a pager is a device um, that basically receives a numeric or an alphanumeric message similar to text message um, but with a slight difference um, these were really popular in the 1990s uh, and into the the millennium, I mean, the, the first few years of the new millennium. Um, and they were so popular because they were affordable. You know, mobile phones um, were expensive. They were expensive to operate. And quite simply, people couldn't afford them. So these were a really cheap uh, method of communication um, for, well, for lots of people, businesses, emergency services. But uh, when it came to these units and the similar ones of this era, um, you know, they were really affordable and that's when, you know, the kids, you know, the kids um, started using them. Uh, I myself did have one and, um, you know, well, in fact, one of these ones, I can't remember which one, uh, was one of my uh, later ones, but I had one of these in the mid 90s. Um, I, you know, they, they were really fantastic. Um, but what they enabled you to do was, or enabled an individual to do was get in contact with you or get a message to you um, and the way these work is you would give the individual or your parents or whoever that may be uh, your pager number and what they could do is they could call that number and either using the telephone keypad uh, type in a numeric um, message and then press the hash key and that would send it to you or they could hold the line and speak to an operator and give a, a sort of an alphanumeric message or a, you know, a text message if you like um, so yeah, the, I mean the al uh, numeric messaging system was quite handy because you could set up a say a series of codes with your parents or whatever. So you know one two three might mean come home straight away, or you know four five six might might mean you know pick up a pint of milk from the the supermarket. It could literally be anything you wanted it to be. So in a way, it's more secure than um, you know text messaging and encrypted um, encrypted. You know, messaging services such as WhatsApp and, and and such like, you know, that code was the only two people that would know that code would be you and the person you give give it to. So, you know, you couldn't really guess it. But, you know, it was basic, uh, but it did it did uh, serve a purpose. The, obviously, the, the actual messaging service when you actually spoke to the operator and gave them a message, um, you know, you would actually get. A message to scroll up on the screen saying, um, you know, meet me at the shops at 10 o'clock, something like that. You know, you, you could get a usable message. Um, but one of the downfalls of these uh, was basically the reception. Um, and that's when I'm going to talk about the difference in technology um, from uh, with in, in regards to text messaging. Um, when you send a text message on your mobile phone, um, that text message or short message service um, goes basically to the, the service centre and then is, is forwarded to the recipient's phone number. And if the recipient's phone number is unavailable, that's to say it's not getting any network reception, it will report back saying, you know, this wasn't sent successfully. And your text message gets queued and it's constantly polled until it gets reception the text message goes to the phone and then the service centre knows it's been received. So, you know, you're never going to miss a text message provided you come into uh, signal coverage. Pagers, however, um, operate on a, uh, it's a send and forget or forward and forget. So when the message gets sent, it just gets sent. And um, if it's not in a, a reception area, um, you know, you won't get the message. So, you know, it, they did have the, the downfalls, but, you know, in terms of usability and affordability, they were, you know, the, that, that's essentially why they were so popular in the UK, at least. 
Um, now, in terms of affordability, I haven't actually talked about the cost of these. Um, these are around, or were around at the time, around £50. Um, and these were a, what they call a collar pays um, pager. And, uh, well, it does it exactly what it says in the tin. Um, you paid your one-off uh, £50 for your unit. Um, you know, you give your numbers out to who you want to have them. And, um, you know, that was that was the end of it. You didn't pay anything at all. There was no contract associated with it. Um, the person calling paid the fee. And, and you know, that was brilliant. Um, also, in certain one of my older ones that I had um, also came with a... Uh, optional service where it would actually send you news headlines for your charge so if something was a major news event it would actually pop up on your pager and another popular one was um, back in the day when the the, the uh, national lottery came out on a friday night it would actually text you the the or send you a message telling you the um, lottery numbers which was quite cool but um, yeah very affordable um, and, and bomb proof they come with these nice little I see nice, really quite robust spring loaded uh, holsters, and the part of the design is there's a transparent, you know, it's clear plastic, but it uh, still allows you to see the message whilst protecting the screen. And as you can see, these, I mean, these are getting on for 20 years old now, and the screens, I mean, that's just smudges, but there's no scratches on the screens, they're really good. And it's a really nice uh, display, actually, it's quite, quite clear. Only downside of them is the, I don't know if the camera will even pick that up. Oh yeah, the the backlight is just a little incandescent lamp, you know, just a little standard bulb essentially. Um, yeah, but the the they worked, they did the trick, and you know, until, um, you know, SMS and mobile phone services came down in price you know these were these were used everywhere uh, so I think that's has covered everything about that show um, you know how it was and how it came about sort of thing so I think what we'll do now is basically tear one of them apart so um, I shall do this one now the only visible difference between these two is this one's a page one mini call and this one's a page one mini mail uh, and I think the mini mail allowed you um, to forward emails to it. I never actually used it, but um, I think that's why it's called the mini mail rather than the mini call. Um, yeah, there are, you can still buy pages as well, I should say. Um, they are now operated on a sort of contract. Um, you know, you can't just, you can't just buy these off the shelf anymore. They, they call a pay, call a pays type. Um, you do have to have a, a service now, and you know there's basically no um, no market for them anymore because of uh, phones and the technology that those brought with them. So um, yeah, it takes a single uh, AAA battery, and uh, yeah, we'll just go inside and have have a look. So there just appears to be two screws inside. And there we have it. So you can see the battery's out, but it's displaying um displaying, you know, the, there must be a capacitor in here that's got a bit of um residual power stored. And if we just take it out, we'll have a look around the unit. So we've got um quite interestingly the uh, rubber keypad membrane or sorry contacts uh, marry up with um the contacts that are actually part of the display ribbon cable which is quite interesting. Um, we've got three uh, points down here, presumably that's for um testing or programming. Um We've got this ferrite, um, I don't even know what that is. Well, I'm presuming that it's the antenna, um, but that's some sort of ferrite rod with uh, a bit of rubber on it. That's just probably just to stop it from rattling about, a um, bit of vibration protection. But yeah, it's just a ferrite 
rod with a, a looks like a steel band around it so presumably that is the antenna um, let's see if we can take this down any further possibly it looks like there's um, yeah it's two boards sandwiched together so there's the back so we've got a small Motorola quad flat pack um, we've got a little chip on board there it's actually a chip on board but then looks like a BGA package as well so interesting yeah a little crystal there and um, we've got a tiny little lithium battery um, for backup presumably and a little buzzer there um, for you know alerting, to, alerting us to a message and if this looks like it'll just pull off yeah lots of crystals in this some um, I don't know if there was a tuning caps or some sort of you know some sort of tuning there um, yeah definitely an antenna and uh, not a lot else and the back is completely empty um, nice cut out uh, in the board there there's some um, looks like capacitors on the back of that antenna um, so the antenna looks like it connects um, it's a double sided board looks like it's connected by this point and these two bottom points that uh, bottom right one just looks like it's uh, mechanical rather than an electrical connection but yeah that's that's all that's inside it um, fairly I was going to say straightforward, but um, you know, there's not not a lot to it at all, um, and that's probably why they were you know so cheap and affordable. The, the minimal technology, you know, it's in essence a fairly simple, fairly simple device. You know, it just needs to be able to uh, receive a, a basic radio signal and um, decode that a um, little bit of data. Uh, that's uh, within that uh, radio signal uh, sorry and we do obviously have a, a pager motor and that's why you know when you see these advertised on ebay for arduino projects and stuff and um, that's why they're called pager motors because this is where they came from they were really small motors designed for really small devices so um this is my other one um and as you'll see, this is a later one. This is from, it must be at least 2000 because when the year 2000 came in, we changed from um, an 01 number to an 07 number. And um, I'm pretty sure, in fact, I do know that it does work because I tested it before I did this video and I was absolutely bemused that it worked. Um, I only tried it with text messaging. Um, and I found that the reception is really bad in the workshop. So what I'm going to do is, I found a place where I think it works. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to put it in here, and I'm just going to prove to you that it says no pages. Okay? And what I'm going to do is, I'm going to call the service centre, and I'll show you, um, I'll show you the two ways of doing it. So, first of all, if I go to phone, I go to my log, and here we go. So I'll put this on speakerphone. Welcome to page one communications. Please hold the line for an operator or enter your numeric message now followed by the hash key. So I'll type in a random number, 4568, and then press the hash key. And that's it. So the call hangs up. And uh, hopefully we should get a message shortly. So what I'll do in the meantime is I will just um, pop this back together. And lo and behold, tells me we've got a new page. 4568. There you go. Um, and then we can, you know, delete it as appropriate. 
no pages. Right, okay. So now I'm going to phone the service centre and see if, um, you know, see if we can get them to send a message or her. It could be her. Um, now what I'm going to do is I'll, I'll actually explain to him that I'm doing a YouTube video and that he is going to be on YouTube. So, um, yeah, we'll see how this goes. Hello, hi, how are you doing? Um, my, name's, my name's Chris and I'm doing a video for YouTube just now on 90s uh, pages and you will obviously be part of that video now. So I was just wondering if you could send me a text message to my pager, please. And what message do you want me to put on that? Whatever you would like. I'll see you from that for you, thank you. Thank you very much, all the best. Okay, bye-bye. Well, she sounded happy. So, <laughs> yeah, we'll see if that comes through now. Um, yeah, so it's sometimes um, a bit awkward, I would imagine, if you were you were sending a message that was, um, would you call it, um, you'd have to be careful with what you're saying is what I'm trying to say. Um, but, okay, here we go. So, let's see what she says. Test. How imaginative. <laughs> well, I've just proved that it does work. Yeah. Um, you know, like, sorry, that's what the point I was trying to say. You know, if you, if you were wanting to send, I don't know, a message to a loved one or something like that, you want, it wouldn't want it to be too soppy. You know, it'd be, you know, you'd keep it to a minimum, wouldn't you? <laughs> it's not like, you know, some of the things you can send on text messages. Not that Mrs. Cochran likes that sort of thing. But you know what I mean? Um, you know, it's more for, for simple stuff. Um but yeah, it works. Um, I think it's amazing that it still works, uh, you know, nearly 20 years later or so. Um, you know, so if you see these on eBay really cheap and you think, oh, well, you know, I might just buy that. I know it doesn't work, but it'd be nice just for, to own a bit of uh, 90s retro technology. You know, they do work. Um, one caveat I'll, I'll put on that is that it's it's the page one um page one still exist um they used to be mercury used to be um a telecommunications provider back in the 90s and them and i think it was cable and wireless so sort of were bought out and eventually became page one communications uh, and they do still exist and that's why these are still supported and the numbers are still active um this particular one here um, 01523 that means it's pre 2000 uh, and this one doesn't work however I have found online that you can um, substitute the first five digits there is basically a replacement 07 blah 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 uh, that will replace that and allow it to work I've tried that it doesn't work but looking at the page one website I just need to call them and they will reactivate the pager for me so to that end, um, I'll finish up there, um, and what I will do is, I will give you my pager number. So there you go, 07654 617 959. And if you would like to send me either a numeric or an um, alphanumeric message, then by all means, please do so. And I will put them up in the description with your username and what the message was that you sent me. Um, please don't send tests though. It'll make me for some imaginative stuff. Um, anyway guys, I hope you found that interesting. That was the Motorola Page 1 Mini Mail and Mini Call um, pages of 1990s vintage. Still in good working order. I hope you enjoyed that folks. If you did, please like and as always, please subscribe. Until the next video. Take care and all the best. Cheers. Bye-bye.